Call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. We have an addition to the agenda. Abe? Yeah, just looking to add a piece of uh, correspondence from another municipality. Um, so if council's in favor of uh, adding an item to the agenda, we'll need a unanimous uh, motion from council to do that and then a motion to adopt the amended agenda. I'll make a motion to add the new item to the agenda. Question? Moved by Councillor Meister for unanimous consent to add the following to the agenda. Correspondence, Reeve Crystal Kissel, Rocky View County, Reeve Fundraiser and Memorial for Colin Huff. All in favor? And then we just need one to adopt it as amended. Can I have a motion? Councillor Kettles? Question? Moved by Councillor Kettles that the agenda be accepted as amended. All in favor? Approved. Yeah, so Minutes from here. July 15th, 2024, regular meeting. You might have to I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. Any questions, concerns? Question? Moved by Councillor Cutler that the regular meeting minutes of July 15th, 2024 be accepted as presented. Could I have a motion to adopt the minutes for July 12th vote? We'll probably vote on the first vote. All in favor? Approved. Minutes, motion for the minutes of July 29th, 2024, special meeting. Councillor Ross, question. Moved by Councillor Ross that the special meeting minutes of July 29th, 2024 be accepted as presented. All in favor? Approved. I declare the public hearing for bylaw 1781 to be reopened. Is that you, Gavin? <laughs> Finish from the past. Okay, so public hearing this evening has been reopened from a public hearing that was held on, um, let's just look at the date here, August 12th. Sorry held on July 15th and that was over held because there was a meeting that had to happen between the International Development Plan Committee with Willow Creek and looking at the agenda you'll see that there is a response letter from Willow Creek indicating that they are okay with the area structure plan as presented and from there I have a few uh, other items to be dealt with the there are changes to the asp so from the time that the first meeting was held the asp has uh, certain changes that have been implemented through the request of staff to the developer and they've been complied with and they are as follows these changes are figures one and two have been amended to reflect the current town boundary References to Township Road 123 have been corrected to Range Road 271 throughout the entire document and in all figures. Section 1.7 under Transportation Impact Analysis has been updated to reflect the numerous options that were provided in the TIA to address traffic mitigation concerns and all maps referencing road closure along the portion of Range Road 271 uh, which was removed. Number four, uh, added section 3.3 to highlight the level of consultation that had gone on into developing this area structure plan. Now these changes have been incorporated into the current document. You'll have to when you come over to the public hearing, uh, adopt this, uh, these amendments, make a motion to adopt the amendments. And then as we head into second reading, second reading will have to be adopted as amended. So if you have those uh, marching orders in front of you, I think you can carry that out. Um, if there are no concerns of the public this evening or the applicants, I think we're um, okay to move forward with this. Council, any questions, concerns? Yeah. 
none from the audience? Okay, I declare the public hearing closed. <clears throat> Action items. Uh, Bylaw 1781 area structure plan to be adopted as amended. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Cutler. So um, this is just the motion then to amend it prior to Segrini. So I move by Councillor Cutler to amend bylaw number 1781 as presented prior to second reading. All in favor? Approved. Could I have a motion to adopt the second reading, please? I'll make that motion. Councillor Meister, question? Moved by Councillor Meister to get bylaw number 1781, the Evolution Area Structure Plan, second reading. All in favor? Approved. Could I have a motion for third reading of bylaw 1781? Councillor Carlson. Question? Moved by Councillor Carlson to get bylaw number 1781, the Evolution Area Structure Plan, third and final reading. All in favor? Approved. Okay. Thanks, Gavin. And thanks all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a bit of a go. Next. Unsightly premises and property standards, bylaw 1788. Yeah, so uh, we're looking for uh, some amendments to the unsightly premises and pro property standards bylaw, um, and essentially looking to align um, our administrative fees that we uh, attach to. Some remedial work that we do under under that bylaw. So think for grass and weeds and unsightly properties uh, when we're issuing warnings and issuing compliance uh, matters, dealing with compliance matters. Um, sometimes the town needs to hire a contractor to go in and clean up uh, uh, the property, uh, grass, weeds, etc. Um, sometimes uh, other things that don't belong on lawns, uh, doing pretty big cleanup sometimes. And so we do have a space for an administrative fee uh, that partially collects some of the uh, work that we administrate with, that, that we do in enforcing the bylaws. Now we have a similar bylaw, traffic and highways bylaw, and that deals with, that's where we do our snow and ice removal. Um, and so those two, uh, the administrative fees, um, are not in line, and so we're proposing to align those fees uh, as they exist um, in uh, bylaw 1711 and 1710 um, to have the administrative fee of $40 uh, aligned with again our snow removal and ice removal. Uh, and so it currently is $25 for that. Uh, we're also proposing to add in a, a second offense um, provision in there. So when there is a second offense, uh, the administration fee uh, as, as a deterrent um, will jump from uh, $40 to $120, or 20% of the actual expenses incurred by the town. And that is consistent with our existing um, traffic and highways bylaw. So we're just looking to mimic that and have some consistency um, in, in our fees and charges um, for any other highlighted changes. Uh, additionally, uh, including some wording in there, if you look at uh, section 9E, some wording to indicate that um, any expenses that are associated with uh, cleanups 
in this bylaw can be added uh, to the uh, tax rule um, uh, of the property if they remain unpaid. Um, that's what we normally do, um, but having it in here is for clarity purposes. Questions? Councillor Gettles? Uh, I'm just around the uh, second offense, is there any timing of that? Is that a six months? Is it a year? Is it five years? Is it the next property owner? Okay. I, it, it, I mean, I know we want to match this up with the other, yep. the other bylaw. So, uh, I just. I can, I can get you an answer. I, it just could come up. What's that? It could come up at yeah. some point, right? Yeah. Any other questions? Concerns? Can I have a motion to accept? Approved bylaw 1788. Councillor Ross, question. Moved by Councillor Ross to give bylaw number 1788 the unsightly premises and property standards bylaw first reading. All in favor? Approved. Okay, next. Bylaw 1789, line, land use bylaw amendment. First reading. Abe? Yeah. So this is, uh, we've been working uh, with uh, landowners in town on um, closing off an old piece of uh, town owned property. Um, and uh, transferring that property to the adjacent landowners. And so because this used to be uh, zoned um, public, uh, owned by the town, uh, as we're in the process of, of transferring over to those landowners, their properties are owned R, zoned R1. And so we're looking to um, have a land use bylaw amendment uh, to reflect that zoning that's going to be needed on these properties. So this is first reading uh, that would uh, rezone that land, after which time we'll have a notice go out in the public hearing, as is our practice. Questions? Concerns? Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Kettles? Question? Moved by Councillor Kettles to give bylaw number 1789 a land use bylaw amendment first reading. All in favor? Approved. Okay, next bylaw 1790 cemetery bylaw update fees increase. Abe? Yeah, so we um, have, administration has been reviewing uh, cemetery operations um, and uh, over the past year or so, uh, we've had undergoing some um, online um, registrations, changing the way that people reserve plots and, and what have you, and also looking at the fees. Uh, and so what we have is a recommendation for some updated fees along with a couple other uh, changes um, in the bylaw. Um, after discussing uh, fee changes and doing comparisons with other municipalities, uh, we note that Claire's uh, fees are a little low and uh, have discussed with Audit and Finance Committee on approximate, approximately 50% um, increases um, for many of the uh, services and fees out at the cemetery and that brings us more in line with with costs charged by similar municipalities and, and certainly less than uh, those costs charged um, in the cities. Um, and so I will just review some of those increases uh, in this proposed bylaw. Um, so uh, burial plot and permit fee, we are proposing to increase that uh, by 50% from, from 500 currently down to 750. 
cremation plot and permit fee um, at $300. Uh, columbarium niche uh, from $950 to $1,200. Um, we're also proposing to put in the, the schedule of the bylaw of the Memorial Tree Program. Uh, that's something that was part of the bylaw, but we didn't have it uh, in the schedule previously. So uh, Memorial Tree, $275, plus uh, if people are looking for a plaque for it, that's another $150. Uh, services open and close uh, from $300 to $500. Um, and, uh, and, and again, depending on the time of year, from 450 to 750. Uh, cremation open and close from April 1st to October 31st, 125 to 150. And open and close from November 1st to March 31st, 275 to 375. Uh, late funeral surcharge um, from 150 to 250. And a weekend holiday surcharge from 200 uh, to 600. A uh, couple other changes in the <coughs> bylaw. Uh, just, they are highlighted, uh, council, in there. Um, uh, section 13, offenses. Uh, so we are uh, proposing to add some wording in there for it to be an offense <coughs> uh, to willfully bring or otherwise allow a domestic animal within the cemetery grounds intentionally or unintentionally unless contained within a vehicle at all times. Now this was previously part of the bylaw, uh, not supposed to have uh, animals uh, in there, however it wasn't in the offense section so it couldn't really be enforced um, by the bylaw officer, but that wording is, is currently in the bylaw, it's, it's prohibited uh, as is, but now it's uh, a, an offense that we can uh, enforce, we do occasionally get complaints about that, so um, that's why we've suggested adding it in there. Hey, just while you're there, um, maybe my copy doesn't, it just seems to, that, that highlighted part seems to end with or. Yes, it does. It does. Uh, it's just, um, Carrying into the next the next offense. Okay. It would be an offense if you did F or if you did G. Okay, I got you. Yeah, I didn't look at the other ones. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? Concerns? Can I have a motion, please? Okay. Councillor Ross? <coughs> Question? Moved by Councillor Ross to give bylaw number 1790, the cemetery bylaw, first reading. All in favor? Approved. <coughs> Next, provincial government correspondence. Honorable Rick MacGyver, Minister of Municipal Affairs. Abe? So this is an announcement about our uh, funding under the CCDF, which is the Canada Community Global Fund. Um, and so if you recall a couple meetings ago, we received some correspondence from the minister saying that there were problems with working with the federal government on a renewal agreement uh, for this funding source. Uh, it's given to municipalities for capital projects uh, from the federal government um, and uh, uh, delivered via the uh, provincial government. And so it looks like they have received uh, an agreement, uh, re yeah, uh, reached rather an agreement for that funding source and they are um, happy to report that the town is uh, will receive 271610 uh, in 2024 under this uh, grant fund. And that's what we were into. 
anticipating uh, for this grant as well. Perfect. <coughs> Next. Government, uh, Alberta Municipalities Notice of Annual General Meeting, September 27th, 2024. Abe? Thank you. Traditionally, the Alberta Municipalities Board will, or the, the membership rather, will vote in, um, vote in directors and uh, representatives from their municipalities, uh, depending on whether or not the, the terms are up. I think they usually serve two terms. Thank you. Next. 3B, Reeve, Crystal, Kissel, Rocky View County, Abe? Yeah, Mayor, I'm having some problems pulling that one up. If you wouldn't mind, uh, apologize for that. Uh, if you wouldn't mind just reviewing, reviewing that one. <coughs> we, we, <coughs> we got a letter from Rocky View County. As you know, they lost an employee while he was at work. I just wanted to send a letter of recognition and condolences to Rocky View County for the loss of their employee. I would need a motion to do that, have a men do that. Yeah. Councillor Cutler. Rocky View County. Okay. Question? Moved by Councillor Cutler to send her letter of condolence to Rocky View County from the town of Clarsome on the recent loss of their employee. All in favor? Approved. Next. 4A, Local Correspondence, 4A, Wandering Willows Fundraising Society. Abe? Yeah, so uh, a request uh, for council here from the Wandering Willows Fundraising Society. Uh, they are holding a benefit uh, for Willowing, uh, sorry, Willow Creek Continuing Care Residents um, and uh, annual Grandparents Day fundraiser. Uh, so we're gonna be having uh, beef on bun, car show music and ice cream. Uh, and they have requested an in-kind uh, donation from the town of use of two tents uh, and eight barricades. Uh, that happens on August the 25th. Questions, concerns? Could I have a motion to approve that? I'll make that motion. Councillor Carlson. Question. Moved by Councillor Carlson to allow the Wandering Willows Fundraising Society the use of two tents and eight barricades free of charge for their annual Grandparents Day fundraiser on August 25th, 2024. All in favor? Approved. Correspondence. Eckbald Bluebird. Hotel. Abe. Yes, so we have a request from a property owner here to uh, forgive the tenancies on taxes. Um, 
if taxes were paid after the deadline, uh, which the order admits, um, but has um, kind of uh, sent um, some correspondence to council indicating that there were some circumstances, unfortunate circumstances uh, with the family that caused them to miss the uh, tax uh, deadline, tax payment deadline, and they incur penalties. Um, we have uh, included, uh, along with this uh, request, uh, policy on the tax, pe tax <coughs> penalty forgiveness policy, uh, which outlines the town's approach uh, on these matters. I did review the, the policy, which doesn't provide uh, any um, option for the administration to, to do anything uh, with, with the property owner. Uh, we requested that we send on this request to you. Questions, concerns, discussion? Councillor Kettles? Oops. Uh, I don't want to be first, but maybe I will be. Um, a, the taxes were paid the next day? Uh, yes, they were. Like literally 12 hours after the due date. Yes. So, so as I read the bylaw, it says uh, uh, June 30th or the last day of business day in June. Um, it doesn't say whichever is first. I think uh, in my, I understand the intent of the bylaw and I understand we have to be pretty firm with it, but in, in, in my estimation it gives me the feeling that I have enough wiggle room that I would probably uh, uh, allow the, re the return of these uh, late fees. Discussion, question? Clear. Clear, yeah, it clearly says the onus of having the current property taxes paid on the due date of June 30th or the last business day in June is clearly laid on the property owner. And I get it was one day, so it was probably a weekend, so it probably didn't go through till the Monday anyhow, so technically it was a few days late and Tuesday. Well, I think, wasn't it that he was out of province or something and he didn't have the laptop to be able to do it? Computers are everywhere. Yeah. True, <laughs> true. Unfortunately, I, I'm i going to say that uh, we have many options, uh, including our monthly installments. Um, it uh, waiting until the last day um, is a challenge um, that if it's not fulfilled uh, the onus still falls on the taxpayer so I would say no. Could I have a motion? Councillor Kittles? Uh, I'll stick to my guns here and I'll move that uh, we uh, forgive uh, the taxes for one day late for uh, this property owner. My question to that is, would it open the door to others that would say, well, you forgave this one yes. person, well, why can't you forgive? So Set that's my question yeah. to that. We have a motion, question. Moved by Councillor Kettles to forgive the property tax penalty on roll number 116-35000 in the amount of $820. All in favor? Opposed? Denied. Uh, a requ information brief, I guess, right, Abe? Uh, correspondence. Correspondence? Yeah. Uh, drift club demo Abe so uh, just in response to the drift 
club demo, we have received uh, some correspondence from the residents over in Deroshi Drive, uh, or Deroshi Estates. Uh, similar concerns to what uh, council would have heard um, that existed with the event when it was held uh, on the east side of town. Uh, the noise um, and uh, concerns over safety. Um, and certainly a little bit of uh, frustration from a few of the residents in the neighborhood over the um, I guess the lack of consultation uh, with the neighborhood. That I think that summarizes uh, the gist the gist of these correspondence items. Uh, so, thank you. Okay. Can I just make one comment on that? Sure. I just appreciate the way that they actually reached out to the town and to us individually, rather than a rant and rave post. There's not one person on that rant and rave post reached out to me personally. So I just respect the way they have come across this way. I agree. Okay, request for decision. FCSS staffing request from Clarsom coordinated response to elder abuse committee. Abe? Um, so, uh, the town has been uh, fortunate to have a part-time staff member for a couple of years now. Um, it's been funded um, through grant funding, um, uh, secured by the Claire's Home uh, Coordinated Response to Elder Abuse. Uh, that funding is running out and that, so that, therefore that position, um, the uncertainty of that position um, uh, is a, is an area of concern for for this group and for the SCS in the office. And if you recall, uh, the coordinated response to elder abuse committee had a delegation at the end of May, in which they requested that the position be funded. Um, once the funding expired, um, the grant funding expired, be funded by the town. Uh, and so. Uh, we have reviewed this at Audit and Finance. Uh, administration and Council have reviewed this request at the Audit and Finance meeting, committee meeting, um, at the end of July. And uh, some of the information uh, we reviewed is uh, if the town were to fund this position uh, 20 hours a week moving forward, uh, depending on the wage, uh, it would cost the town somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty-seven uh, to thirty-two thousand. Again, that just depends on the the, the wage um, that's settled upon. But it would be about somewhere in that range, around thirty thousand dollars to um, the town uh, to the taxpayer um, yearly. Uh, there may be a few things that we can do to offset some of those costs um, internally without the taxpayer having to uh, bear that full burden. Um, such as cutting some programming and, and cutting some costs and allocating some of those, uh, those costs uh, to uh, the labor, uh, to that position. Uh, however, um, likely within a few years, any of the savings that we can see uh, would be minimal and we'd be pretty much back at that $30,000 cost uh, for that position yearly. Uh, the ask for from FCSS uh, from the coalition uh, again the funding runs out at the end of um, October November at some point uh, so the additional cost of the organization uh, for this year would be uh, $2,500 um, which um, just because of the way the budget has gone this year uh, would not require um, uh, that we're under budget that it wouldn't require approval for council for that expenditure we could still remain within budget um, however we do need uh, we are looking for council's approval uh, to approve the creation of a permanent part-time FCSS senior support position um, moving forward into the future um, if council is in favor of that questions concerns discussion Councillor 
as, we, as we discussed at the audit finance, it's within our budget. It's a service that's needed in the community. So I'll make a motion to provide the funding for that part-time position. Question? Moved by Councillor Cutler to approve the creation of a permanent part-time FCSS senior support position to begin after the Clarison Coordinated Response to Elder Abuse Committee's funding expires in late 2024. All in favor? Approved. Okay, information brief. Oh, financial report 36.A, Statement of Operations. Any questions, concerns? Nope. Could I have a motion to approve that, please? Councillor Carlson. Question? Moved by Councillor Carlson to accept the consolidated statement of operations for the month ended July 31st, 2024, as presented. All in favor? Approved. Uh, Mayor? Yep. I just wanted to point out that we did have a breakdown uh, now that we've moved on. I, uh, but we did have a breakdown um, in that, uh, that um, statement of uh, finances of some of, the, um, some of the other line items. Uh, just continuing what uh, was requested previously um, having breakdowns uh, better understanding of the of the budget so that was for uh, roads streets and sidewalks and common equipment pool thank you okay information briefs rural community immigration pilot application Abe. So uh, just an update on the uh, immigration programs. Uh, the original first round of the immigration pilot, uh, federal immigration pilot has come to an end. Um, and council approved uh, staff applying to the second round, uh, the second immigration pilot program. And so this just is some information that we have we have done that um, and it should be area wise um, should be consistent with the round one if we're if the town is approved we had a 25 kilometer radius and so we included the town of Staveley and um, uh, businesses within that 25 kilometer radius that were in the MD of Willow Creek uh, they were permitted to use the pilot program um, and so they'll be permitted again. Uh, we did receive confirmation from both municipalities that uh, they supported it. So, um, questions, discussion. Looks good. Yeah, and we have, uh, I guess, a little update uh, on the provincial. There is also a provincial immigration program. I'm not sure if we've talked about it at this table, but council previously approved uh, the town applying for that as well. Um, but the provincial official said, if you're um, already subscribed to an immigration program, that's they wouldn't permit us to do a second one. And so um, if we're not successful with uh, the second round of the federal program, uh, we would apply for the provincial one and can keep you updated, keep council and the community updated on that. Thank you. Communications and Recreation Survey. Abe? Uh, so those surveys uh, closed out a week, in, week or so ago. Um, communications uh, and Recreations recreation facility surveys. Uh, we polled the community on uh, how well the town was communicating, um, what was working, what isn't working, and uh, how we could improve. And uh, we also uh, polled the community on how to better fund our recreation and cultural facility building maintenance. Um, 
Uh, and so we received 288 responses um, from the community. Um, given that it has just closed, uh, we are still compiling some of the data and feedback and we'll present that um, in September. Discussion? Not do we have the results. Thank you. Next, 7C AAIP Rural Entrepreneurial Stream Progress. Abe? So the town does belong to the uh, provincial um, rural entrepreneurial. Uh, it's the Alberta Advantage Immigration Program Rural Entrepreneurial Stream, Entrepreneur Stream. Uh, there's a couple of different uh, streams uh, within this provincial program. One of them is the, Im the immigration program that, uh, Im that I was just referred to. Um, there's also an entrepreneur stream, which allows the town to um, bring in entrepreneurs who want to start, uh, immigrant entrepreneurs who want to start a business in Claire's home. Um, so it's a, it's a pathway to uh, gain permanent residency um, through um, entrepreneurial means starting, starting their own business. Um, so, uh, this is just an update with council uh, that we have had, um, we have created the, the system uh, in town here and we are receiving uh, inquiries. Uh, we've had a couple, um, two, I think, two actual sit downs with interested parties and one uh, we have recommended to provincial officials uh, for approval. Um, once we, we do a discovery uh, meeting and uh, interview with the interested party, uh, if everything checks out, um, then we forward on their information uh, to the provincial officials uh, for uh, processing. Um, and so that's where we're at with that program. That's something that council approved probably a year, year and a half ago, um, and we just thought it was uh, time to uh, bring back some information on that. We do get a lot, I think a lot of, uh, as when you advertise for jobs, job postings, you sometimes get a lot of uh, ones that you have to filter through. So it's not like we, there's no shortage of applicants, but to have quality applications, uh, I think um, there's not, not a lot, but there have been several. Questions, concerns, discussion? Okay, information items. MD Will Creek. Abe? Oh, sorry. <laughs> C yeah, CAO report. CAO report. Yeah, just uh, reports from the CEO and different um, directors and staff in the organization uh, on some of the activities they've been up to in the last month or two. Uh, is there any questions or comments on that? Been a lot of construction uh, in town uh, lately. It's nice to see some of it wrapping up. Uh, Edmondson Park is, uh, it's been a process, but uh, a lot of good work been done there and moving forward we're looking forward to uh, hosting a lot more events down there and bringing the community down to that area. Uh, the parking um, recently, angle parking was recently finished and a lot of the irrigation and, and what have you. Thank you. Council committee report. I forgot to send the reminder for that one, so. <laughs> I don't all, think any of us are having meetings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there's no meetings. We're all Slow busy down. with the parade. The museum one grand aggregate. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> Bragging rights. Of Bragging course, rights. yeah. Okay. Council resolution stats. Anything new there, Abe? Uh, Looks like we have to add some stuff. Yeah. Did we? No, we have to. 
Well, yeah, completed. we have to. We have a couple in progress. Uh, yeah, so this, this one is actually outdated. We do have some that are uh, completed on here, oh, you actually. So those participation plans, uh, pretty much we can write both of those off. Um, they're, they're just about, well, we still have to report back, but the surveys are complete, right? right. Uh, those nominations um, for those uh, be prepared. Yeah, the emergency management exemplary service, those are submitted, so those are done. Um, so just, yeah. Thank you. Information items. MD Willow Creek. Oh, look. Hey. Yeah, it's the information item uh, from the MD Willow Creek on the uh, Southern Alberta Summer Games Report. Perfect. Any other questions, concerns? I'll make a Question? motion to adopt the information items as presented. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. Okay. Question? Moved by Councillor Meister to adopt the information items as presented. All in favor? Approved. Motion to go in camera. Councillor Carlson? Question? Moved by Councillor Carlson to go in camera at 7.47 p.m. for the following items. Business interests of a third party, FOIP section 16, and local public body confidences, FOIP section 23. All in favor? Approved. We are now in camera. Camera off. Motion to come out of in camera. No Councillor Ross. 813. Question? Moved by Councillor Ross to come out of in camera at 8.13 p.m. All in favor? Approved. First motion. Uh, I'll move the motion to extend the closing date to August 23rd. Question? Moved by Councillor Carlson that the buyer is responsible to pay half the interest charges regarding the purchase of 375 43rd Avenue West as per Section 10 of the Purchase Agreement, provided that they close the sale by August 23rd, 2024. Exactly. <laughs> All in favor? Approved. Motion to adjourn? No. 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 We got one more. I don't want to do one more. I'll make, well, a, yeah, I'll make a motion to add, uh, add Valerie Ritson to the museum board. Question? Moved by Councillor Meister to appoint Valerie Ritson to the Clarisome District Museum Board. All in favor? Approved. Motion to adjourn. Councillor Ross. <laughs> Question? Moved by Council Ross at the meeting adjourn at 8.15 p.m. All in favor? Approved. We are now adjourned. Camera off. <laughs>